Hello there, good morning. How are we today? Um, hello, Carol. Oh, it's rainy in France. Doesn't look too smart here, actually, Carol, at the moment. Um, so I've just lost myself. There I am. Um, hello, Kate. Happy Coronation Day to you too. I was going to say Happy Coronation Street. <laughs> happy Coronation Street. Oh, oh, just before she disappears, here she is, look. Hello, sweetie. There's nothing for you in here. Nothing for you today. You're coming in anyway. Here she is. Oh, both of you. Oh, come on then. They'll be quickly followed by a dog, you do realise, because she's starting to get a little bit jealous of all the attention these girls are getting. So, I wasn't expecting them to come in. Got no food? No food today? No, we're not teasing you. Don't you poo. Too late. Um, hello, Sharon. Hello, Andrea. Queen Debbie, go on. And June and Shirley, hello, hello, Biz. It is sunny in Nova Scotia. Uh, morning, Kimberly, Michelle. Um, Kim's bunting fluttering outside a house. Coronation quiche in the oven. Oh, fabulous. Um, no sound. We do have sound going out from here, do we not? Let me just check. One, two, three. Yep, sound is going out from here. Oh, good morning, everyone watching. Everybody has got sound. Um, right. We've got on Facebook. We've got Julie and Elaine and Kristen and Glennis and Sue and Sue and Ruth and Gillian and Mandy. Hello, good morning to you. I didn't think we'd be very busy today. Um, yes, Samantha's got sound. Linda, turn your volume up. Um, got sound on Facebook. Lovely. Hello, Andrew in Southern Ireland. Uh, Anne-Marie's got the coronation on the telly and me on the Mac and, and the iPad. Wow. I've just got a loose wire there, excuse me. Check your tab, says June, thank you. Um, so, missed the last few lives. Oh, welcome back again, Susan. Glad you caught us this morning. Hi, Rita, you're up at the crack of dawn this morning. You were up really early this morning, really, emailing at stupid o'clock. Hello, Brenda in Kentucky. Hello, Jean, hello, Christian, hello, Vera. Right, got loads of new fabrics to show you. And I'm just going to make a really simple drawstring bag from Union Jack Fabric, because I thought you might have some memorabilia that you want to store. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're just going to um, just going to make something simple in a bit. Morning, Sue. Hi, Karen. Hi, Jean. We've had a couple of chickens near already. I know. Pooed on the floor. Um, hello, Anne, Sue, Andrew. Um, oh, Andrew, I'm so sorry. Oh, we're all thinking of you. We're all thinking of you. That's that's really sad. Um, Andrea lost her mum yesterday. Sorry. Um, hello, Megan. Good idea to keep all the coronation makes in, she says. Well, it's appropriate for the day, really, isn't it? Um, Celia's got the coronation on in the background. Hi, Sarah. Loving the mug, a posh cuppa for the queen of sewing. <laughs> um, morning, Tracy. Morning, Carol. Goody gumdrop, she says. Morning, Fab. Oh, yes, yeah, shall we show you? Right, OK. Well, that goes cold. That will probably be it. Hello, Lisa in Texas. Now oh, then, um, we've got we've got quite a bit, so I'm glad you've joined me. We've got some lovely dressmaking fabric. We've got some fun cottons, and we've got canvas. We've we've got the lot, and we've got Styleville. So I'll show you that in just a second. Um, so first of all, I was going to make the bat wing top out of this, and I did say to Kim yesterday, I'm going to make the top, and I'm going to wear it on Saturday. I just haven't had time. Um, this is a jersey, but I think it's lovely. And you imagine the batwing top in that. That, that really actually suits my hair colour, don't you think? Um, so if I get round to it, I shall do that. So that's the print. Let's move that out of the way. And it's nice and stretchy, but it doesn't lose its pattern when it stretches. And I think it's cotton. It feels like cotton. That cotton jersey is lovely. Um, but it drapes really well. It's nice and lightweight. It's breathable. And... <laughs> it says my tab's just crashed. I don't know what's going on there. Um, sorry, I've just, um, I seem to have crashed Facebook some. Oh, no, you're there. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, we're back, aren't we? Um, yeah, so I, I just thought, yeah, lovely fabric, lightweight, drapey, nice and cool, perfect for the summer. And if you are making the batwing top, um, that's a great fabric. It's a nice top as well if you have a look at the download on the website because um, using stretch fabric there's no zips or fastenings hooks and eyes buttons buttonholes anything like that nice isn't it Rita I like that 
I should get round to it at some point. Maybe by Wednesday I'll be wearing a bat wing top made out of leopard print fabric. Um, Claire doesn't know how to sew stretchy. Um, you'll, you'll need, just really briefly, because I've done this before, um, you will need a ballpoint needle on your sewing machine. A ballpoint needle has a slightly rounded end so it doesn't cut through the threads because a knit is basically, um, just like when you're knitting, um, it's one piece of thread that's knitted to create the whole thing. So if you do break a thread, then it can ladder a little bit. On saying that, it doesn't fray, so there's no need to finish off the edges. If your fabric starts to curl a little bit, and Jersey tends to do that, drench it in spray starch. That'll always wash out afterwards. And mm, a walking foot can help on your sewing machine, particularly when you're sewing two pieces together, because sometimes they can slip. And I think really that's about it. If you have a lightning stitch on your sewing machine, which is one that's like a zigzag stitch, but at an, an angle like that, then that's a good one to use. A lot of machines will have a stretch stitch, um, which looks like three dashed lines, and that's in effect a back stitch. Takes ages with that one, and it does use quite a lot of thread, but that's a stretch stitch. Uh, otherwise, depends what you're making. If it's something quite loose, like the back wing top on the website, then um, you just use a straight stitch, because uh, it, it doesn't really have to stretch very much. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, Marian in Norway. Hello, Shelley. Good day from the land of Oz, says Wendy. And we do have, have we got another stretch one. No, let's do dressmaking first. This one, I have been informed by my daughter this morning. We've got all of the stock. We can't get any more of this once it sells out. Is that pretty? We have a viscose, and a viscose again, natural fibres, beautiful drape. Lovely and cool. Um, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah can't watch, can't cope with three screens. Me, you and the telly. I watch on catch up. All right, Sarah, thank you. <laughs> Speak to you later. Um, so again, it's nice and cool and floaty. So blouses, floaty skirts would absolutely perfect. Things like the, um, uh, the, the skirt on the website, on the Half Yard Club website, that's cut on the bias, I think would be really pretty in that. And I was thinking about making a bag out of it. Um, it will need an interfacing, but there's no reason why you couldn't make something a little bit more sturdy like that if you wanted to. And um, watching me on the coronet, it's, it's quite nice to be watched next to the King and Queen, isn't it? All on your screens at the same time. But I think that's lovely. That, that, I do think that's lovely for a for a summer frock. Something nice and floaty, maybe with a bit of bit of a blues on going on would look lovely. On a similar vein, because this again is viscose. We've got two in this collection, and Kim came up with a really nice idea because we love these. Both of us when they arrived just went, ooh, love that, love that one. Um, of using both together on a wrap skirt. So you've got, you know, one half that kind of floats over the other, or if you've got a vent in a skirt, putting one behind the other and using them both together. Again, it's viscose, so it's lightweight and fluid. It's not like a quilting cotton. Um, it's definitely for dressmaking, 160 centimetres wide. But look, look at the drape on that, it's just beautiful. <laughs> Mary, they, they are having a, a quite a sing-song in the garden. We don't have as many sparrows this year as we have done over the years. Are you? I'm not using sparrows disappearing. We still get the occasional robin, blackbirds, um, jackdaws, crows. Kite flies over quite often, loads of pigeons. Um, but the sparrows and the thrushes don't seem to be here this year. I've seen one Jenny Wren. Mm. Um, Topping one a skirt and the other, that would look lovely, Carol, wouldn't it? Can you imagine for your, for your holes this year, for this summer? I think that would be... Oh, addressing me to this, this is all gathered and elasticated around the, around the top. So that kind of style would look really nice in this as well. Mm. Um, Omar, it says the coronation's on TV in Norway as well. Oh, OK. I suppose it's on all over the place, isn't it? Um, hello, Jean. Still more dressmaking. This again, lovely and summery. Another viscose. Oh, press the button, Deborah. And love the colours on this one too. They're quite um, old beachy, I think. But again, lovely, lovely drape. 
and that's it's perfect fabric if you do want to make a gather because you know sometimes when you have a gather like this with an elasticated waist if it was in a firmer fabric it, it kind of does this but if you like an elasticated waist but you don't want to add the bulk then viscose is perfect for you it is very fluid so advice for that one would be um, walking foot again to stop the two pieces from slipping and support so if you haven't got an extension table on your table then so so I've gone onto a buttonhole stitch for some reason that was weird um, then sew on a table with the expanse of the table on the left hand side so it supports it because it can kind of spill off your sewing machine some, at some point um, cold and raining in South Africa miserable in Preston I better get my dog walked hadn't I before it comes down here don't don't send it over here will you uh, I've got loads of sparrows, but not seen as many blue tits. Oh, now I saw a blue tit yesterday. But yeah, we used to get loads of blue tits on the uh, on the bird feeders, and hardly anything this year. Um, I'll see you later, Carol. She's going to catch up later on. That it, it does. It's very seasidey, isn't it? This one, Shelley. Uh, sorry, uh, Mari. Hi, Anne. The striped one makes such nice beachy loose, but oh yeah, oh that would be a very glamorous, Rita, wouldn't it, with pockets. Wide leg palazzos with pockets would be lovely. Hi, Tina. Right, that's it with the dressmaking. This one's quite nice. A little bit different because we've got the uh, the reach for the stars and the rockets, but it's a flannel. So it's quite soft. It's like a, it's a cotton, but it's brushed, so it feels really, really soft. I think my granddaughter is going to love this one. There, there may have been madness in the method of my daughter ordering that one because she's mad on... Um, on spaceships and things like that. Um, oh, you spotted the gnomes, Megan. How many have we got? Oh, Gary's bought quite a few of them down. <laughs> um, the gnome book's coming out. I think, I think it's going to be the last week in July or the first week in August, and it's going to launch on Create and Craft. Um, actually, we can get it on pre-order. Now we've got dates when it comes in. We'll put it on pre-order on the website if you want to sign copy. Um, but yeah, they're lovely. So that is, um, we've got Bugs is the one with the rabbit ears. And then there's Flora, which is the one with the bee on her head. And Ding, no, that's Dong. Dong is the fairy one. He's got wings. And there's Ding as well, which is his missus. And then the one down here that's got the mushroom hat on, he's Fungus. Is that all we've got? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is available on pre-order, I think, on Amazon. It'll be available on pre-order on um, Search Press. They won't be signed. I don't know what kind of deal Amazon are doing. And there will be books on Create and Craft. I think it's the last week. I can't remember. Around about the last week in July, first week in August, because I've got a show booked in for it already. Um, and they will be signed. But if you want it signed personally to you or to somebody that you want to give it to, then I'll, I'll put them on the website next week. Um, 31st of August. I think it has. I think it's actually due in on the 27th of July, but they um, kind of overestimated a little bit. They always put a later date just in case it's held up on the boat. Fungus. I know, Biz. They've, they've all got funny names. There's um, a pirate called Ahoy. Um, there's uh, a guy all dressed in green called Moss. There's a scarecrow one called Tatty. Oh, it's been so long since I've... I wrote the book, I can't remember what else we called them. There's a witch called Eek. <laughs> uh, I was by Mosey. I don't know where, where it is, actually. Oh, there she is. Um, the pattern for the bee bag. Julie Jones, yes, and it's free. Um, if you have a look on... on my Facebook page, where you are now, if you scroll back a bit, I, I think I put it underneath the last live that we did on Wednesday, and I think I put a post on there as well. It's on the Create and Craft website, and it's free. So there's a free pattern. Uh, there's no pattern. It's instructions, free instructions, which are downloadable, and there's a free video as well. And there is a link to buy the fabric for a kit if you wanted to do that. Um, but yeah, have a look. Have a look at previous Facebook posts because there's a link there. It's quite difficult to find if you go to the Create and Craft website itself, but. Um, but I did put a link on there so you can go directly to it. Um, I'd love to say a gnome store with all your gnomes for sale. <laughs> That's a good idea, Megan. Uh, oh, we've got Kim. 
Oh, a gnome ditty. Kim wants a gnome ditty. I'll have a think about a gnome ditty. I can do a gnome ditty. You can tell them that I wanted you to do um, a king gnome. A king gnome. <laughs> king Charles gnome. Yeah, Gary wanted me to do a King Charles gnome. But I thought it might look like I was taking the mickey. <laughs> uh, always use bags you've made yourself when you go out. You've got a lot to choose from. Not not always, Maria. I tend to just use the same bag all the time. Um, I'm not I'm I'm not big on designer handbags or anything like that. If it's practical, that's fine. And when I've found one that works and it's big enough and it's got enough pockets, I just tend to stick with it all the time. Um, I don't keep them all number in. I do give a lot away. Right, still got more, still got more. Look at this. Um, lovely quality fabrics, these ones. These are the art gallery fabrics, yes. No, oh, no, Three Wishes fabrics. That's art gallery fabrics, is it not? No, Three Wishes fabrics. Um, these are lovely. And we do have some things that will go with these really well as well. I'll show you those in just a second. Um, and there is a bit of a collection. Mm, there's that one. I've got some new planes as well for you. There's that one. In fact, one of the new planes that we've got, I'll bring that in early and show you now. This one is paprika. It's a rose and hubble. Doesn't it go well with a fox? I love this. My new favourite colour. My previous favourite colour was the misty blue which I've got here. Actually, that might go well. Misty Blue I used to use with everything. But my Paprika is my favourite colour. Mind you, Misty Blue goes really nicely with that one as well. Look at that. Doesn't that look lovely? Mm. I've got another one. There we go. So that's the three. All woodland themed. Um, and that's, that's all three wishes. This is one of the premium qualities of fabrics that we do. I can't remember what they're called, but if you go, um, nothing cuter than the fox curled up, I know. If you go to the website, debbyshawsewing.com and look under new arrivals, then um, that you'll find them there. They would be lovely for a baby's room, Shelley, and they're really good quality as well. You can tell that as soon as you pick them up, because they just feel just lovely. So that's those three. And I do have, an, where's my art gallery fabrics one? There we go. Um, so I'm talking to myself now. So just fold those back up. And but I think if you go for you know if you're making a quilt and you went for all three of them, you do need something to break it all up. And I do think that paprika works really well with all of them. So you know, if you just need to do some sashing and borders around those, then I think that would be the one to go for. Um, the gnome stuff, Kathleen. It's it's a book. Um, I'm going to try and get hold of some felt because I've used a lot of felt with those. Um, the bodies are mainly made of cotton. The hands and feet are, some of them have got hands and feet and some of them haven't, like the one in the plant pot. She's a pot gnome. Um, and she hasn't got arms and legs. And the fairy one, Dong, um, He's just got boots on, but you can mix and match them. So there's basically two sizes of bodies. The bodies are made in exactly the same way, and they're basically balls, and then lots of different styles of hats and hands and feet and uh, accessories and things to go with them. Um, hi, Anne. Hi, Claire. Hi, Alana. Um, just for you, Alana, we've got the cassia yellow on the website. Now, at the moment, it's in one metre pieces because that's all we had. That's because these, um, these were going to be kitted up. But we will be getting more in stock. Where's the panel? Here it is. But if you've already gone for the Cassia panel, as Alana has, then this is the fabric that we coordinated with it. Because it's just about the same colour as what you see there. So I've just dropped something on the floor, which was rather important. back to that. Um, Cassia panels we do have on their own on the website. These will be going on Create and Craft with instructions tomorrow in Seamless Sunday, instructions to make two cushion covers. But if you want to buy it on its own, 
then that's on the website right now, as is the red version, which was the chrysanthemum. But again, the coordinating fabric, which goes perfectly with it, we've just got available in the one meter pieces. And this is what I wanted to show you because we've got all of these different colors of piping. And that green is the one that we put in the kits. Goes so well with the green on there. So if you are making a piped cushion, then that's going to be absolutely perfect for you. Um, those go with quite a few, actually. We'll have a look at those in a sec. So, well, that's what I knocked off. If you were going to go for these ones, just move those out of the way. Um, oh, Anne's got a new machine. Right, so that, that and that, you can move out of the way there. I think with these, is that the, I think that's the coral, but again, matches perfectly. If you wanted to make something with piping on it, you know, it could be around the edge of a, a cushion cover or across a bag or around the edge of a quilt or something like that. So, oh, I've, I've, I've been sourcing felt, Shelley. I've been trying to get really good deals on natural felt, on wool mix felt. So it's been taken, taken a while, but I'm sure we'll do that. A gnome called Fungi. He was really quite shy. He wanted a new home, but he couldn't get a loan and he didn't want to leave the fungi. <laughs> Joan, I may well pinch that off you. That's brilliant. Um, oh, Mary. Oh, no, so stop, and, stop and enjoy it for a little bit. Do, do your sewing later on. Right. Two more fabrics to show you. Oh, come here. And uh, oh, and I want to show you something else as well. These are the new canvases. Um, just got my pause in time to make bunting and ground. Oh, I'm glad you got it in, in time, Sophie. These two are fabulous, and I'm, I'm making um, a mug bag out of the brightly coloured one this afternoon, which will go on a video on YouTube hopefully later on today. Um, this one, I'm making a bag using both of them, absolutely love them. And the bag, the, no, the mug one, the mug thing I'm making this afternoon, I'm using the paprika. And this one I'm using a lilac. I haven't got that with me. Um, but again, if you wanted to put some piping around something, just look at all of the different colours you can use here. It goes with the purple. It goes with pale blue. It goes with the green. It goes with the, I don't know what colour that's called, but they're all on the website. Or the bright red or the pink, or the orange, or the coral, or the, no, not that one, not the yellow. Grey, oh, that would look nice with grey. Whether it's the light grey, or the dark grey, or the black. Look how that outlines. Doesn't that look lovely? <sighs> so that's canvas. Um, brand new for you, non-directional, and it's just really lovely quality. Canvas, if you haven't seen before what we sneaky peeking Gina what we sneaky peeking is it the gnome box I haven't got one yet um, I can show you the rest of them no I haven't got all of the gnomes or oh, not all of them because um, two of them I think it was um, Ahoy and Moss have both gone to the um, to a book fair in London I'm not sure when that is um, but I can, as oh, we call it Aztec. I can bring the rest of them down on Wednesday and show you if you like. Let's see if we can get hmm, Kim. What do you think? If we get um, the gnome book on pre-order, I've got some a few pre-orders for you actually. Um, if we get the gnome book on pre-order next week sometime, also going to put my fabric on pre-order, my next range, which isn't due to come out until beginning of June. That's a countryside walk. You know, if you're on my Facebook page and you look above. Um, where, where my name is across the top, it says a countryside walk. That's my next range of fabric. It's been a long time coming. It should have been here in January, I think. Um, I'll watch it later, Bron. I'm not missing my lives. Um, YouTube later. I'm just going to make, I've, I've got to film it yet. Um, just a, a little bag to keep a mug and some tea bags in. I, I was having a play around with some fabric this morning. So I don't want to do a video of that then. Thank you, Megan. Megan loves me next range. Oh, I sent you pictures, didn't I? Um, right, so that's that. Oh, canvas, I was going to say, 
it's um, a good sturdy fabric, great for cushion covers, great for covering um, chair seats. This could be for your garden furniture, um, bag making, absolutely perfect. If you're going to wear it, I'd say jackets and gilets. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a dress out of it. It's not fluid enough for a dress. Sharon's got a new machine as well. Whoa. Um, oh, got another one. This is really nice. This is another art gallery fabric. And what's this one called? Season and Spice. Was that the same as, did I show you that one? I can't remember if I showed you that one. Is that Season and Spice as well? No, because, oh yes it is, Season and Spice. There we go, those two. This is such a lovely colour. It's, um, it's difficult to describe because it's grey, but it's got a bit of petrol, you know, a bit of, a bit of green. A mug bag, yes, Mayor. I'm going to make one of those later. And this one has got the spice market. And these also go with the paprika. I love this colour. My new favourite colour. Um, our gallery fabrics, our quality is amazing. It, it's just so smooth. Such a such a lovely handle to the fabric. Um, and it's quite fluid as well, but it's, you'll know that when you get it home. Like I said before, the quality fabric, you just know it. Um, but it, it just feels lovely. But this, I think, is such an unusual design. You could even kind of cut the squares out and use them as um, like a, a, a quilt block on its own, couldn't you? Maybe put some sashing down the centre. Mm. Paprika. <laughs> Paprika. Megan wants them all. I wanted to show you as well, we'll get making this drawstring bag in a bit, um, the Strawberry Thief fabrics, because we've got three and they're all quite different. Um, oh, Sophie says, by the way, the Alice panel is really nice quality, making bunting centre my daughter in Tokyo. She's a fan too. <gasps> Watch this space, Sophie. There may be another one coming out in a few, well, a couple of months. No, oh, shouldn't I say? Mm. Didn't think you wanted to do the coronation going on. Oh, Jackie, I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss my live. And I can always watch the coronation back later on, can't I? But when you consider, how many, how many people have we got on, on YouTube at the moment? 185 and, oh, oh 113 on Facebook. So, because not everybody watches the coronation and we have a lot of, um, a lot of viewers in other countries that probably couldn't care less. 180. Oh, thank you, Megan. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Katrina. Um, morning, Carol. And just finished a skirt I thought was rust colour. Paprika sounds much. Oh, yeah, no, it's paprika. Paprika. Um, <laughs> Leslie's going to go and rob a bank. Off, off you go then, Leslie. Go and rob your bank. Right. We've had a few questions about. The strawberry thieves, because we have three on the website. These are they. That one. And that one. And I'll put this on the end. And I've just switched myself off, so let me just do that. And that one. So they're all pretty much the same print, slightly different colours and slightly different sizes. Um, I'm just going to get this up on the website so I can see what they're all called, because I forgot. Right, here we go. So, search strawberry, berry, thief. There we go. Um, so. Oh, well, that's quite self-explanatory. Um, the one on this end is mini strawberry thief, teal. This one is Large Scale Navy, and this one is Nature's Dream. And, yep, they're different manufacturers, but they're all using exactly the same print. But I thought it might make sense to show you them all kind of next to each other, so you can see what the difference is. The colours on the large scale are particularly bold. This is a little bit more subdued, and then the small print has the teal, and I think... It seems a bit obvious to go for a red if you're going for a mix and match. I think the misty blue 
works really well. It's just the same colour as the leaves here. Maybe not so much for that one. I'm going to say paprika again, aren't I? No, I shan't say paprika. Oh, but that works quite nicely. So anyway, just thought I'd show you the differences between the three. While we're talking of differences between things, um, we've stocked and do stock Bosal single-sided foam stabiliser and have done for years now. And quite a few of you said, have you tried Starville? I've never heard of it. Um, but we've had so many requests for it that we've actually got some in. And I just wanted to show you the difference. Because there's not a lot, but they are both on the website. So if you were, well, that looks nice. Um, if you did have any confusion, I want to show you. So this one is Starville, this one is Bosal. They're both single-sided fusible. And the bosal feels a little bit firmer. It's almost like the glue is a little bit more scratchy than the um, than the styleville. So styleville feels softer. What I had noticed as well, when you put the two together, the styleville's on the bottom. It's very slightly thicker, but the bosal I think is sturdier. I haven't used styleville yet, um, but I will do. So I've took myself a sample, and I'll let you know. Um, but yes, yeah, a little a little bit thicker but it is actually softer than the Bosal. So we'll have a, have a play with those at some point. Yeah, I don't know, it, it is a, a greeny colour, the Misty Blue, but it's a Rose and Hubble Misty Blue, and Rose and Hubble called it Misty Blue, so that's what we've gone with. Um, but it, it does have a, yes, it is more green than blue, but that's, that's what Misty Blue is. I don't know why, I don't know why. One more thing to show you, which is something a little bit different. You might not have seen these before, but this is a cutting mat that opens up like that. So for easy storage, um, it's in centimetres and it is 60 centimetres by 45 centimetres. So that's a, a two when it's opened up. But the clever thing with these is the way that they fold. So you see the crease down the centre, that is deliberately so that if they put a straight line down the centre and you're going to use a rotary cutter, you're going to be cutting into the seam and it would eventually cut all the way through. And on the back, it's grippy. So it's got a non-slip panel. That's the non-slip panel down the back, so it's not going to move around on the table. Um, and it's a, it's a prim, it's a prim love one. But I just think that is that is such a really clever idea. And Tracy with Misty Blue go with the rabbit panel. As I ordered olive and I don't like it. The rabbit panel. I shall have to have a look and compare them, Tracy. Let me let me write that down. Um, hold the line. Tracy. Nichols does Misty Blue go with Rabbit Panel doesn't like Olive. Right, um, knows how to stop cushions slipping around on outdoor furniture. Oh, I don't know, made of waterproof material on rattan. I don't know, June. Anybody can uh, can anybody answer June's question? How do you stop outdoor cushions from slipping around on the outdoor furniture? That's a good question. Uh, Kirsty's got lots of misty blue. It's surprising how many of my pattern fabrics it goes with. It's a lovely colour, isn't it? It is. It's very, very versatile. That one. Um, hello, Sue. I've got my parcel. Went to the wrong address. Oh, good. Oh, Julie, I'm glad it turned up. Good, I'm really pleased about that. Right, so that's that. But again, this, this is centimetres. We'll have a look, look and see if we can get some inches ones. But we started off with, with centimetres. I thought that's all non-slip. That's a, that's a non-slip grippy back to that. That's such a good idea. See how non-slip it is. That works. That's really good. I'm really impressed with that. That does not slip. Ah. Well, it said it wouldn't. 
sticky back velcro that's a good idea right so julia uses velcro strips on hers put bobs of hot glue on the back that's a good idea and not, not to glue them to the furniture but um it makes it non-stick doesn't it like silicone glue as well takes it longer to dry though sticky matting sticky matting is a good one linda even if it's just a strip of sticky matting that's a good idea june's got her parcel is this a tea l-shaped try the sticky velcro and they won't stick yeah maybe something um it sounds like you've got the same garden furniture as us um a rubber roll yeah i, I think the the sticky grippy matting stuff would be good you know like the, the kind of stuff that you put under uh, your sewing machine foot pedal to stop it slipping or on the bottom of of slippers would be a good idea and anyway, i'm just going to make a rather quick um drawstring bag so that's that 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 that, that. make sure i've got all my bits because I'm not, a lot of you will have memorabilia and I just thought it might be quite nice to store it. Um, but it's a drawstring bag at the end of the day. So if it's nothing to do with the red, white and blues, it's just a drawstring bag. So it's quite simple. I've used a technique before. Um, let me get my ruler and measure the sizes for you. So we have 13 and a half inches down by 12 inches across two pieces of outer the lining is 14 inches by 12 inches across so it's half an inch bigger and you shall see why in just a little while i'm just going to plug my iron in oh mary's mary's put <laughs> she's put us all on pause while she gets a clipper made you look um we'll see you in a second mary enjoy your cuppa Saw your notebook on Amazon for pre-order. How exciting. Yes, Elsie, we, we must get that on the website as well. Thank you, June. We had loads of thumbs up after your marathon the other day on um, on YouTube. Oh, Purple Haze Creations. It's got babies in a bird box. Oh, we've, we've got a blackbird nest. We've got a, a, a little wooden shed in the garden that we keep, I don't know, lawn mowers and stuff in. Paint, tin of paints. Paints of tin, tins of, tins of paint, that kind of stuff. And um, it's got a broken window. And how the blackbird knew, or found it, I don't know. But uh, she fly, she's been flying in and out and actually built a nest on the shelf in between plant pots. So we'll, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. I shall let you know so we can take some pictures. All right, with the outer fabric, I've put a G700 on the back. Because it's gathering, I just thought it might gather easily or easier than using something like a fusible fleece. Um, but it does give the bag a little bit of sturdiness. What I've also cut, I'm going to put handles on it. There's my handles. Are two pieces of fabric for the channel for the drawstring, and those measure 10 inches by 2 inches. So two of those. And then my handles measure 3 inches that way and. 20 inches thereabouts that way so let's make up the handles and the channel first so i need my ironing mat and you've seen this many many times before i'm just going to fold this in onto the center you have my attention. Just had to watch the gospel choir perform at the coronation. Oh, how lovely! I'll watch it back later. So to the centre, and then hello, Ramdas. Longer, just to the centre. I think I've just run out of steam. And then other side to the centre. and then fold in half and press. I'm just going to switch that off and put some water in this. Because I do like a bit of steam when I'm pressing. We are out of stock of the irons at the moment. And unfortunately, so is our supplier. But we'll try and get these back in again as soon as we can. Um, Oh, Leanne says William Morris is one of the artists that she studied for 
Art GCSE. Oh, how lovely. Uh, June says, oh gosh, did she knows. Um, oh, she's, oh, June's using dog fur um, and nesting time. We're like taking the fur to their nest. Oh, that's a nice idea. So when you brush the dog. Oh, I don't know, Angela. A red fabric does tend to go darker when ironed. I don't, I don't know. Anybody know why red fabric goes darker when it's ironed? I mean, it recovers again, but you're right, it does do that. Um, have you got it on steam? Sorry, my, oh, sorry, Chief. the little button in the centre. Because it, sh it should give you a good old blast of steam once it gets going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do tend to run out of steam these days, Jennifer. <laughs> um, hello, Ellen. She's been watching the coronation as well. And then long edges to the centre. So what's the plan for the rest of the day then? I'm not sure how long the coronation goes on for, but um, when it gets so blooming hot, it's great. Or oh, June, I know. They're lovely little lions. Um, do the same with my husband's hair when I cut it. Oh, a little nest made out of husband's hair. <laughs> Right, and then to the centre. Then I'll just sew down each side. Ellen's been watching. Oh, I said that, didn't I? Um, sew Gnomes is... Oh, thank you, Kim. The Sew Gnomes book is now on pre-order on the website. She's on the ball, that girl. So, basically, if you order, if you want to order it now, I'm pretty sure, I will double check, but I'm pretty sure the, the date it goes on sale is the first week in August. Um, I'm sure it's due to come into the country on the 27th of um, July, as long as, you know, nothing, as long as nothing holds it up. It should be the 27th of July, so we'll get them out to you as quickly as they can. Um, with the pre-orders, you need to pay for it when you order, I'm afraid, because that's the way that the website's set up. If you want it signing, I, I sign all the books that we sell on the website anyway. I'll just put my name in there. But if you want it signing to anybody in particular, please can you put that in the customer notes? So when you go to checkout and you fill in all of your details or you get, just go to the checkout page, there is a section that says customer notes. Those actually come up on the packing slips. So um, whoever's packing can alert me. Or leave me a note to say that this one needs signing. So if, if you do that, and then we will get them out to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, apparently, Create and Craft get exclusives, but I haven't been told that. Oh, and don't forget, if you are Half Yard Club member, you get a 10% discount, even on brand new books. Right, so now both sides. I'll bring the rest of the gnomes that I have over on Wednesday. How's that? And, uh, and put them on the shelf behind so you can have a look at them. I'll introduce you to the crew. Unless Gary's watching and he fancies bringing any down now. A fairy garden around a tree, put a couple of nests with golden eggs in a tree, and the magpies stole all the eggs. Oh, oh, wouldn't magpies love to lay golden eggs? Or, sequ or sequined eggs. I mean, that would have to be a bit sore, wouldn't it, for the hen? Um, I'm just going to spend the rest of the day learning about a machine. What machine have you got, Anne? Housework. No, Leslie, no housework on Coronation Day. Shouldn't be doing housework now until Tuesday. Charles says, no housework until Tuesday. That was me, Uncle Charles, not King Charles, you know. Right. A lovely day on Grimsby, says Vanessa. So we've got that. It's, I say it's not too bad here at the moment. Just looking for my scissors. Um, got piles of fabric all over the place. And I can't see where my scissors are. You can probably see my scissors better than I can, to be honest. I've got a little pair that aren't so sharp. Just have to use that. I'm just going to trim the ends off. 
adjusting my machine. No, as far as machines are concerned, Alana, you're allowed to housework your machines. So you can dust it, you can clean out the fluff. Um, ironing, you can use the iron to press your fabrics and you can pre-wash if you like. But you're not to do the laundry. I mean, this, is, this isn't me, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of saying that to you. No, no. Um, it's, it's Charles, it's all Charles. With the two pieces that are going to be the channel, I'm just going to fold the ends over a couple of times by, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so, and sew across the ends. So, quite, quite a, a tight little hem there. We need to do that from the ends of all four. <coughs> oh, June's on a mission again. June's on a mission to see how many thumbs up we can have within the within the broadcast. What did we get last time? It was over 400, wasn't it, June, last week? Don't think it was that many today, Coronation Day. Um, we'll start later. Oh, morning, Eilish. Uh, wet day equals sewing day, says Sandra. Well, dry day equals sewing day in this house. Um, all right, so just, just going over the ends of all of these. And then we'll press them. Oh, the iron should be back in stock next week. Thank you, Kim. Go on the waiting list if you, wait, if you want an iron. Um, when you go through to the actual project product, it'll say out of stock, but click on the item and it'll say keep me informed. And then you'll get an email as soon as they come back in again. Vanessa loves the bag behind me. This one, that's the free one from Create and Craft. Free project from Create and Craft. Um, Vanessa, have a look at the the link in the... There's a link on Facebook on one of the posts. I put it on there. So if you have a look back, it's only a couple of, a couple of links ago. And right, so... June says you can thumbs up if you're watching on TV too. I'm just folding the edges of that over by about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, as long as I can fit my ribbon through. Then that's fine. Okay. I don't know how to do that on the TV. Oh, well, on his husband does the laundry. Gary's not allowed to do mine. I've had more, I hope he's not watching, more things either shrink, colour run, and he's not allowed to iron either because he doesn't do it very well. So we do our own. He doesn't like the way that I do it either. Did you see the steam fast irons had a recall? Steam fast, steam fast irons. Who did those? No, I didn't. Oh, I've got swallows nesting in the porch. Oh, Lucy, how lovely. Oh. Now then, these are going to go just over the top of the bag. Remember, this is going to gather up, so we don't want to go right up to the top. So I'm going to drop that down by about an inch and a half, put that in a straight line. And the handle is going to go behind this as well. So that's going to pop in that like that. So let's have a few pins in here. So not too close together, because again, this is going to gather. So I'm going to pop that about there. Measure and mark these if you're... Um, if you're going to make one, just to make sure that they're symmetrical. I'll measure these in just a second when I've done it. So that looks about the same as that. And I'll measure that. So we are two and a half inches from each side with the handle. Hello, Anna Maria. Good morning, Debbie and followers from Argentine, Buenos Aires City. Welcome along. Nice to have you company. Right. And the other one is going to go in the same position on the opposite side. So let's match those up. And again, same distance, a couple of pins in there. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Oh, you're back. Um, 
Sarah's put a link on Facebook to the free Create and Craft project. So make sure that's not twisted. And a pin in there. And then I'll just pop those on top of each other just to make sure that they're in the same position. And I think that was pretty good. Then we're going to sew across the top and across the bottom, leave the ends open. And back stitch just across the end because there will be a little bit of pressure going on this when you put the drawstring in. You can back stitch again across the handles if you wanted to make those a little bit more secure. Make sure the handles are facing up. Oops. Let's do that nice and straight. Go back over that a little way. Then to the end. And back again. Oh, Linda's had agility train. Or for you or the dogs. Right. And back. Pins can come out now. So I'm not sewing over the end because that's where the ribbon's going to go through. And back at the end. Claire says, I won't let my husband do the washing of the clothes either, and he doesn't iron. So all left to me but he still interferes and puts another load if I'm upstairs so, so yeah Gary, Gary thinks he's helping out doesn't do it very often because he gets into trouble when he does <laughs> but he doesn't like the way that I do stuff either so and in fact Tyler does his own washing as well each to their own in our house and back down this side Um, it doesn't do the household type. They get very pretty good like that. I tend to spend more time sewing than doing anything else, so it's um, pretty good. I don't cook. Not that I can't. Just that Gary loves it so much. Why not? Okay, and I'm going to trim off all those loose threads now. Because there were quite a few, and that looks a little bit tatty. Coffee's gone cold. We've still got no rain here. Th is it raining for the coronation? I haven't even looked this morning. Because it was forecast rain, wasn't it? So if he's got a brolly or a mac, can you imagine I have a pack of mac? Just put me mac on. Right. Okay. Then we shall. So the top across there. Oh, June, controversial. And that across there, we'll do the same there. So lining to outer, just across the top. Showed my children how to use the washing machine when they're about 14. They learn how to cook as well. So when they left their other halves, so when they left, their other halves didn't come down. <laughs> I, I read that a bit too quickly, Lynn, because it read, so when they left their other halves, like they left them, um, but when they left, though the halves didn't complain, they did nothing. Good thinking. Right, so just turn across the top. Uh, Brenda loves this kind of bag for gifts. They're really simple, aren't they, Brenda? And when you can, you can go to town with them, you could use a little bit of wadding on the back of it and quilt it. Um, you could personalise it. You know, put some initials on there. There's so many different fabrics out there. There's something for everybody. So it could be um, a child-themed one or something grown up. Um. <laughs> oh, Carol, those rain hats. Yes. Carol says she can see Camilla wearing one of those fold-up rain hats. Do you remember those? <gasps> they were like um, plastic and they all concertinaed up and fastened at the end and there was a ribbon wasn't there and you opened them out like that and then yeah because I can remember when I was little my mum trying to get me to wear one I felt so embarrassed you know only about five or six years old and I don't want to wear one of those over the top of your hat we used to have um it was in the 60s like fur, not fur but faux fur hats and they were really round 
and then they've got long strings for a bow under your chin and pom-poms on the end of them. Thought that was the bee's knees, but not very good in the rain. So out would come the fold away rain hat. Yes. Oh, do you know when you when you've forgotten all about something? That's really taking you back home. <laughs> yeah, Jean says her made her mum made me wear one. Oh, um, I didn't post it. Losing ten pounds a week. I haven't heard from her for a week or so, Jules. Um, I'll message her later on this afternoon, actually, and see how she is. But th things were looking positive last week. But she did say that it was, um, she's getting a bit stressed. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know on Wednesday if I hear from her. I had that, I had a white, a right one. Did I have it? No, I think mine was like a brownie coloured one. I've got a feeling my sister had a white one. Um... Oh, well, Alana's husband was a single dad when she, when she met him. You've got, got to be domesticated, don't you? Right, now, right sides together. I'm going to sew them together all around the edge. I'm carrying on without even saying what I'm doing. This is so easy. Um, so I've lined up the seams at the top. And we'll just sew. And I will need to leave a turning gap in the side of the base of the lining, or the side of the lining, wherever. Okay, so just keep going all the way around, la da da Back down this side, we'll do June. I shall let her know you're thinking of her. She might be watching, just didn't feel up to joining in. Hello Cindy, found us finally on Facebook. Oh, we're always here. Every Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, coronation or no. No king is going to get in the way of our life. And then Wednesday afternoons at 4 o'clock as well. Coronation dinner time. <laughs> it's not even 12 o'clock yet. In an ABC mug. What was wrong with your last one? Thank you. Went cold. That is hot. Um, you asked me for something and um, I had it on, but I wasn't listening to you. Gnomes. No. Oh, just sat on the mic pack. Um, what, you want them? Yeah, Kim's put the book on pre-order on the website. So I said I'd introduce the rest of the gnomes. Do you want to leave it till Wednesday? Because there's quite a few, aren't there? Yeah, I'd have to bag them up. We'll bring them down on Wednesday. Um, right, so just sewing literally just around the edge. Move it out of the way. Um, Deborah, yes? They're all watching the coronation on the settee. <laughs> the <moment. laughs> they're all on the settee watching the coronation at the moment. <laughs> oh. Leave a turning up on the left hand side, I think. Um, oh, Jules had one of those pom pom hats as well. <gasps> So I had one particular pair of shoes that I really liked as well and they were like a tan coloured leather um, with a round toe and a buckle across them and little teardrop shaped holes cut out the, the top of them. Love those shoes. But I wouldn't wear ankle socks. Hated ankle socks. Funny isn't it? Funny what you remember. Come on. And when I first started at the grammar school, at the grammar school, um, the uniforms were really expensive and my mum wouldn't buy me a blazer. So I wore a gabardine mac. Hated the gabardine mac. Right, so I've gone all the way around and left a... T um, have, I, have I run out of... Oh, I thought I'd run out of thread. I left a turning gap in the side there. Have left a gap, Helen. Yes. And then I'm going to square the base. So let's pull these two bits open. You can feel where the seams are at the bottom. And I'm going to sew straight across here, about an inch and a half from the edge of the stitches. Not the end of the point here, but from the edge of the stitch there. So I'm not going to, um, to measure and mark that, but just go straight across there like that. And do the same on all four corners. So that will be an inch and a half on all four sides. 
reverse on this is slow, isn't it? The um, the straight stitch machine that I've got that I use down in the studio um, is really quick. Well, it's as, it's as fast on reverse as it is going forwards. Just squash the seams in opposite directions when you come to that. And again, measure this if you're not so confident. I think I've done a few of these now. You can tend to gauge the correct size. <laughs> Tina says, Charlie's royal robe would make a fab bedspread. <laughs> they were covered up, weren't they, when they when they went into the um, into the cathedral? Didn't have a, a gazebo. Um, so we wouldn't have had to put a pack a mac on. Remember pack a max? Yeah, your Majesty, put your pack a mac on. Camilla, get your fold away rain hat over that crown. It'll be off with a head if they're listening to this. Because because there might be you know if he's if he's got his um, ear pods in, he might be listening. You never know. Yes, Alana, if you like, I can. It, it's it's blooming heavy. Um, but I'll bring it down on Wednesday, if I remember, and show you. It is lovely and very quick. Ooh, ooh. I've got some some feet to have a play with as well. I just haven't had time to get around to it. Um, they are compen compensating feet. Um, where the actual foot... If that's a machine foot, hole in the middle, needle there, they, the two sides work independently. Need to have a play with it. But we're going to be having those on the website as well. Let's turn this the right side out. At some point. When you square the bottom, it holds more, even though you take some fabric away. I think you're right, Glenys, it does seem to hold more. But I had proper rubber over, rubber over shoes, yes. Never had any, but I've heard of those, yeah. <laughs> oh, who's, who commented on the platforms? Linda loved platforms as well. Oh, I, I love my platforms. I, d I got into trouble at school for wearing. My, my first ever pair would have been about 1972. I'd be about 12 or something, maybe 13. I don't know how I got away with it because my mum was dead against them. And they were white clogs with soles like that and a heel like that and just white oh I loved them I made such a, a clonking noise wood on wood and I wore them to the grammar school where they were very strict on uniform they were furious didn't quite get sent home but I was certainly not allowed to wear those again back to the brogues <laughs> galoshes that's it Kathleen thank you now then because I made the lining a little bit bigger than the outer. I want to push the lining inside and let's just push out those corners. I should, whoop, should have done that before, um, I turn, before I sewed the hole up, really. There you go. Because I made the lining a little bit longer, I should have a border of about a quarter of an inch all the way around the top. So, so it looks like it's got binding on it. Let's move the handles out of the way and we'll give that a press. And then I'll top stitch it. That's that. Same on that side. Should we give this a bit of a press while we're here as well? And to press, I don't think the lining's inside there properly, so just push that out and that's it red and white cork says June platform sandals I, I loved them platform boots platform sandals platform shoes oh and then do you remember skulls I don't know if they still do those I had a pair of skulls um, with, with just one denim strap over the top and I thought I thought it was a bee's knees in those as well Thank you, Zakaya. Darling. <laughs> right, top stitch around the top. 
Sandra had red clogs when I was 13, so I was going to grow out of them. I love the sound they made. Oh, I did. I felt ever so important in them. Now I'm going to top stitch. I'm not stitching in the ditch because um, I'm not very good at it. And I think it's quite a skill to be able to stitch directly over the top of an existing stitch line. So I'm just going to go very slightly onto the red bit. So it doesn't matter so much if you wobble slightly. And I'm stitching red on red, so it's not going to stand out anyhow. So I'll make sure the handle's out of the way. So this would make a nice little bag without the drawstring, actually, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what we could do. We could do is like the tie side. That might be quite nice. Doxy skulls, yeah. The wooden soles. Um, and that. So I've got this. And then I've got some blue ribbon. So this needs to be cut to slightly longer. Might cut that back down size again later. Now I've got two choices. I can either thread this all the way through and gather it and make a drawstring. Let's do the best of both. Or I can thread it through and sew the ends over so I've just got ties at the side. I think we'll have a bit of both. So where's my safety pin? This will make sense in just a minute. Um, So let's pop that on there, thread it through the channel. Right. And then I'm going to prevent it from gathering all the way across. So let's take that out there. So if I put a couple of lines of stitches here, when you pull the drawstring, it's only going to gather the edge and this, this will stay flat. And I think that's quite a nice idea. So let's pop that under there. And down you go. Oh, I've, I've unplugged me. I've unplugged myself. I'm going to mark that as well. So it's even each side. I had my little ruler somewhere earlier. Really. Okay, so let's measure about four inches in the middle here. One, two, three, four, that will do. Yes, I'm, I'm not going to sew those bits. May, may as well mark this one while we're here as well. So I'm just going to sew over the ribbon on those two sections. Right. So make sure the ribbon's central and I'm not sewing through both sides of the bag. And go over and go back. And then same on this side. I'm not sewing through the other side. So I've got that. And then we'll, whoops, we'll do the same with the opposite side here. So safety pin on the end. And thread that through and we'll do the same. So anybody going to be watching Seamless Sunday tomorrow? So if you weren't aware, it's on Create and Craft from 7 o'clock in the morning through to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's a six-hour show, and I'm going to do all of it, apart from maybe a 10-minute break in the middle, so I can have a catch up with some of the other guests. Um, we're having a top tips kind of theme to it. I did put a post on Facebook and sent a message out on YouTube. Could you email the studio 
with any of your top tips. So I know loads of you have put them on Facebook and I have copied those already, but if you come up with anything else, I'll repost the email address, but it is on the previous post on Facebook. Um, it's seamless Sunday at createandcraft.com. And I do pick up those emails myself, um, as well as producers and directors. Um, but that's the email to email tomorrow as well, if they can get it working during the show. So we've had lots of top tips from you. And we're going to read them out throughout the course of the day. Then guests-wise, I have um, Sarah Payne with a Brother Sewing Machine. I have Karen from Seams. I've got Alistair from House of Alistair and Sewing Gale from Daisy Chain Designs. I think that's it. I don't think I missed anybody. So we're going to have a nice day. And I'm going to be with Martin and Janice and Janice. Janice and Yanis tomorrow. The housework, Shelley, really. And coronation weekend, for goodness sake. Right, so I've stitched it there so that won't gather anymore, but I should be able to just gather the edges. And oh, that's worked rather nicely. And let's just tie that up there. And the same on this side. Like so. Have I missed somebody's comment, Megan? Uh, Megan, sorry. There. So actually, that would make a nice little bag that you can still get in if you wanted to use it just as a bag. Or you can loosen the drawstrings if you needed to get something wider in it. Um, or you don't have to um, sew the centre here to stop it drawing up. You could make it into a complete drawstring bag in which case the handles are going to be a bit closer together like that. So you've got different ways of making it as well. So I hope you like it. I hope you make lots of them. And they're quite quick makes as well, but it looks quite impressive, doesn't it? That, I'm quite pleased with that. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I did it that way. I'm quite pleased with myself. Um, but if you're making things to sell as well, then um, that's a, a quick make, because you know you don't charge enough for your time. I'm just going to cut the ends of this off at an angle. Alexa. Oh, Lorraine's going to be watching tomorrow. Email in, won't you, Lorraine? They don't always send down all of the emails in normal shows, but if they can get this iPad working, then I get the email, so I should be able to read out most of them if I watch them anyway. Have a lovely weekend yourself, Linda. Um, OK. Well, go and enjoy the rest of your weekend, too. I might have a look at what's going on with the coronation. I'll try and get this filming done. Um, this afternoon for the for the mug bag and I'm just going to move that over there and do that and I shall see you on Wednesday at four o'clock so Wednesday um, if I remember let me write that down as well Wednesday Wednesday bring nooms and Root stitch machine. Yes. Um, don't think we're going to make anything on Wednesday, but we'll have a chat and I'll show you my machine and I'll show you the gnomes. And I wonder if the other two are going to be back from the book fair by then. Um, but then, if you do want to pre order, have a look on the Debbie Shaw Sewing website. Don't forget to use your member discount if you are a Half Yard Club member as well. If you're not fussed about the book being signed, Half Yard Club members get 30% off my books on the Search Press website. So if you go to searchpress.com and put my name in there, um, use the code, uh, actually no, go to the, go to the Half Yard Club website and there should be a link from the Half Yard Club and then you'll, they'll be, you'll be given the code that you can get 30% off, just on my books, not, not on every book, just on my books. So if you're not fussed about signing, then that might be a better deal for you. Um, okay, where are we? Um, make sure I haven't missed anybody. I'll see you tomorrow, Kate, thank you. June, thank you very much. Have a lovely bank holiday yourself, Glenys. Um, Daryl's off to cut out fabric again. What is a straight stitch machine? Cindy, it is a sewing machine that only does one stitch, a straight stitch. Doesn't do a zigzag, doesn't do anything fancy. Um, it's only made to do a straight stitch, but it is very fast. 
Um, but that straight stitch for quilting, for free motion, for shearing is amazing. So they're quite expensive machines, but they're built to last and they've only got one job to do and they do it really well. And that's the one that I, I, I love my, my DX7 and it's very useful for down here because if I'm demonstrating, um, there are going to be occasions where I'll need to use a zigzag stitch or a decorative or make a buttonhole or something like that, which the other one doesn't do. But for most of my work when I'm writing the books or making projects and things like that, I only use a straight stitch for most things anyway. So that's all done down there. So I'll bring it down and show you. Uh, the DD105, is that what? I don't know, I, I can't keep up with these numbers. It's just my straight stitch machine. So is it a DD105? I don't know. Oh yeah, oh sorry Megan, DD105 is not a machine. Is it? Oh, um, if you, <laughs> if you're not a Half Yard Club member and you want 20% discount on any book from the Search Press website, not my website, from the Search Press website, if you use the code DD105, uh, DD capital letters 105 you'll get 20% discount thank you Megan had a had a bit of a moment then um, I'll see you Wednesday Rita thank you very much I know Megan I just um, oh Sandra's ordered the gnome book oh thank you see you, Tracy um, on Wednesday Julie's going to pre-order the gnome book don't forget to write in the um, if you're ordering from me to write in the customer notes if you want it signing to anybody particular. Anyway, don't go, lots to do. So I shall see you again, well I shall see you on, on um, I was going to say Secret Sunday, Seamless Sunday tomorrow. And uh, if you can't make it then, I'll see you again on Wednesday at four o'clock. Thank you for joining me today, bye bye.